What's up guys, main man Sui here, hoping you're all doing awesome as always and welcome back to another commentary by me. We're now going to look at Tiger Uppercut, Uppercut. And this is literally unbelievable. It is unbelievable to me. But we have another like Pakistani sensational player about to make a big name for himself and we see the what has seemed to be a like literally unbeatable knee knee 2.0 no one's some some people have been able to make him bleed at least like khan at evo he won evo but even khan wasn't really close in my opinion but he but he lost his first match at evo 2022 against khan so at least Khan made him bleed a little bit. But then that guy, Ni, you know, arguably the GOAT, the greatest of all time, then after EVO went directly to a team-based tournament, Korea, South Korea versus Japan. He single-handedly wipes out the entire Japanese team, including Nobi and Pinia. Some of them get close to winning, but still it cannot be you know, denied what, what a presence Ni has had ever since like 2000 and what, six? But, you know, uh, the last year or so, he's been almost unbeatable. And now, turns out, I haven't watched this, but Pakistani player named Davud is going to beat him now. I'm going to watch this. Now, I haven't watched it. All I hear is that Davud beat him in winner's final, so he sends Ni to losers. He's on Alisa main, by the way, Davud. And then he does the exact same thing in grand finals, beats Ni again. Like, so Ni, the master of, like, reading patterns, right, and timing, he can't get the download on Davud, is my guess. There must be something about Davud's patterns and timing that Ni just can't cope with. And that's going to give Davud the win. But yeah, this is unbelievable. Uh, I, I was fully expecting Ni to take this tournament. And Arsan was not there, by the way. I'm so sorry for the long intro, but before I start, I also want to say that Arsan Ash himself sponsored Davud. And has been, uh, Arsan has been, for the last two years, he's been sponsoring four, four Pakistani players, all on his own. He, he spent, apparently, according to Arsan himself, he spends 40% of his earnings, uh, be it from tournaments or sponsorships, he spends 40% of his earnings to give a salary to Davud and three other guys to make sure they can travel to tournaments and, you know, live their own dream, you know, becoming a pro player. So, you know, my hat has gone off quite a few times to Arslan, but uh, uh, well done, sir. Well done. So enough of an intro. Let's watch this hype-ass Tekken. So again, uh, Davud is on Alisa main, and again, a character you should not underestimate. I put Alisa in my top 10, and I got some criticism for that, mainly from Alisa players. But character with, with very small hurt box, top 3 movement, insane whiff punishment and punish in general, and some of the best poking in the game, and can close the distance like that. Uh, Unbelievably strong character. The only problems are like uh, clunky combos, bad wall travel, and damage isn't too high. But the frames. And what what a pleasure to see Lord Knee back on Steve. Uh, this character has grown so much on me lately. You'll see me if you watch my channel a lot. You'll see, you're gonna see way more Steve content on this channel. I've always loved this character, respected it so much, but he's just growing on me more now. Uh, and seeing uh, Ni play Steve is just such a pleasure. Any character he plays, it's fun, but when he goes with that guy, it's just like, yes. Okay, so winner's finals, Tiger Uppercut, Davud Alisa versus Lord Ni, and Ni is playing Steve. <laughs> What a down for two. Brutal timing on uh, Knee dashing in there. Chainsaws. Chainsaw low. Nice duck by Knee. That's very hard to time. No throw break. 
Wow, the aggression by Davut. I, I was expecting a little bit. It was relentless there. I was expecting a little bit more careful. Uh, nice duck there on the high. An immediate punish. That's a 1 1 2, minus 10. Power crush! Oh my god, where's Nee's health? Where's Nee's health? My god! Alyssa rounds, if you watch Cuddle Court, it's usually not that fast. That was like, boom! Two rounds gone. That. Two of the best pokes in the game, in my opinion. Full crouch down for 1 plus 2, back 1. Those two moves are pretty perfect. Power crush. And Davut now staying very safe. Nice down 3. Knee blocks for mix up. Manual peekaboo down 1. Beautiful. Eesh. Nice timing, buddy! Again, clips uh, knee with a down, uh, down for two going in. Nice. But but as you saw, from that down for two, wasn't even close to getting the wall. The combos are a problem with Alyssa. But the thing is, if you give Alyssa, like, Julia combos or Jin combos, like, legit, wall travel and damage, this character goes to, like, top... Top three? Top fucking two or something? It's like... You don't want that character to have good combos. You really don't. But yeah, the timing on those down forward twos on knee running in. Uh, wow. Nice fundamentals. So he reads knee's timing exceptionally well here. So wow, wow, that was, that was a no round round. So winners finals, so it's it's first to three, best of five. Nice pressure. Oh, the, oh, great back one. Boom, big combo. Can he close out this round? He certainly needs it. But we, we know Nii, like, he, he's a robot, he, he's an AI, he, he gets everyone's timing down. So that's all I'm waiting for, that he stops running into these down for a twos, and he starts landing the counter hits. That's what I'm expecting to see, the big turnaround. We've seen Nii before, like, it's, it's very rare these days, but we've seen this before. He can, he can get no round brown, one match. But the second match, it just starts closing the gap, and then eventually he's completely turned it around. Because he's arguably the best in the world at reading an opponent's timing and their patterns. And that is why he is the GOAT and has been dominating for so long. It's that very unique ability to read. But now it's, again, it's looking much better now. Much better flow, he's not getting tagged. He's up one round, but still it's very even here. It's very even. Nice Sonic Fang. Very nice, one to one. One of the best strings in the game. Keep out, pressure, that string can do anything. Ouch! Davud, very aggressive. Now backing away, life lead. Don't want to take needless risk against Steve. All Nee needs, needs is a back one here. Oof. Yeah, it, those pokes add up. It's so good, those pokes. Her poking is so strong. It's so strong. Nice. Nice backdash by knee. Nice 1-1-2. One, one, Does he get some pressure here? Down for 2 is blocked and Davud actually doesn't respect there. Goes for a down for 4. No punish on down back 3. Yeah, knee uh, 
usually his punishment is lit like a hundred percent but he's been missing a few punishes here and those punishes add up you know even if it's a minus 10 minus 11 you know it adds up when you don't take the guaranteed damage Oh my god, Nee, can you take this? Seven seconds left. Rage drive blocked. Rage drive blocked. Nice step! Uh, oh. Alyssa with that forward momentum on so many attacks. Even if you sidewalk, she ends up two meters away from you. And it's, it's very, very tricky to get a punish in. She has so many attacks where she closes the distance immediately. Oh my god, now suddenly it's it's 2-2 two, two in rounds here, it's even. Nice block on the hop cake, that's a wild man. Down to one. Nice down for two. And he just can't get the counter it here. But he's getting some pokes in. But yeah, are, are you gonna be able to outpoke Alyssa, man? She's got the lows, and Steve doesn't. Oh, big rage drive! This is not gonna be a wall, I think. He needs another mix-up. Ah, 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 ah! Okay, throw break. Oh, big frames. Oh, three seconds left. Yeah! Oh, Steve has no comeback ability if your opponent's blocking, so he had to dash in and go for the stomp. That's literally what you have, and you'll mix that with a mid-rocket launcher. That, that is the round ender, right? He, he actually gets the stomp, and, and now you have a guaranteed albatross down too. I didn't even know Alisa could press 3 plus 4 to fly up to dodge that. And then I guess he got the fucking... yeah. Back turn down four to close it out. I didn't even know that was a thing. And I feel like Nee must have known about this because I think Nee's number one training partner and friend in the South Korean scene is Chanel, who is like the most well known Alisa player. I feel like he, he must have known. Wow! What an end to that match! I, I thought Nee was getting a... He was getting that match. Chanel Eliza, man. Ducky! Uh, finally, I have you here. I've been waiting for your... I always miss your presence. But... It might be on Eliza main now, but Alisa used to be his number one character, right? And he must have known about that setup. But I guess maybe he was thinking, you know, he might not do it or something. That's it. Oh, okay, so I was misinformed. This was winner's uh, semis. Th that was not the winner's finals. So that was indeed a first to two. So I'm going to specify that on the on the 14-year-old uh, main man on the YouTube video. So no, hopefully no one is too misinformed. So that was actually Davud sending me to losers. But one has to say that while the first match was an ultra-convincing no-round brown, that second match could not have been closer. And that was literally... Ni won that match if it wasn't a matchup specific Alisa gimmick where she can actually dodge that. That is guaranteed damage on, I think, every character outside of. Or, or maybe, I, I know Alisa can jump up there. I don't know if Devil Jin can do the same with his fly up, but I, I think that might be too slow. So, extremely well played there by Davud. Uh, and now we are going to watch the grand finals. So exactly, in the winner's semis, Davud sends Ni to losers. Uh, Davud proceeds, makes it to grand finals, and Ni beats everyone else to fight his way back 
to grand finals but now he's obviously on loser's side so Davud only needs to win the initial best of five right and he needs to actually reset so he, he needs to win twice two sets so cat can't wait to watch this Pakistan has many hidden talented players. I've talked about this in many videos. It's like both the Korean scene and Pakistani scene has a ton of players you've never heard about who are killers. But especially Pakistan, I know about a couple of them. Davud, I have to admit, I haven't paid too much attention to him, but I know Zarnab is like the best Leo in the world and no one knows about him. And then... Kir, what's his name? He used to play like Katarina. I think he's like unbelievably good. Um, they have a couple of Mishimas as well that are unbelievable. Uh, they have the best. I mean, best lay in the world goes goes to an African player in my opinion called Akon. But then they have. Uh, is it Asan Ali? A lay player in Pakistan is like also unbelievably strong. Oh, it's Kasim Mir. Right, thank you. Kasim Mir. I remember him because I, I watched him play some Katarina and I was like, a, a character that's not strong, but he made her look so good. Devilster is a godlike Jin. Yeah, of course. I've talked a lot about Devilster. Uh, Amazing Jin, one of the best. But don't forget about Atif Bhatt as well. Like, also unbelievable Jin. So, uh, right, so now Grand Finals. And now Ni brings out V Fengwei, the character that... The only character he needed at EVO 2022 to take the entire thing. So now let's see how Ni's Fengwei stacks up against this really, really interesting Alyssa. So again, I, I told you about Alyssa's poking. Fengwei though, when he gets in that distance, right, right, range zero, like where the chests collide up close, probably the best poking in the game might, might be Fengwei. When he's that close, the frames are absolutely ridiculous. And his options. So now he's not playing Steve. Now he's playing Feng Wei. So now it's very different. Very different. And I think he's going to be much more aggressive now. Nice duck there. Nice 1 2 2. Yeah, that's one of the skills I feel like a lot of players are doing. Like, just duck just a little bit in case they go for a big high. And then Again, just duck 1-2-2. Yeah. Two, two. He's keeping it very safe. He's not going for a uh, launch punish. Oh. Brilliant step. And Ni looking very much in control of that first round. He started out pretty aggressively and then kind of just fell back and let Davud do his thing and he just punished him. Just pure defense. Situation once again. The wood is in the of the oh, that's a wall bounce. Ouch, ouch, and more chainsaw pressure. Nice up for two. Got him out of air. It, oh, God, and now he's back at the wall. It's a very bad position. Uh, yeah, he's, he's really trying to make his way out of air, but it's difficult. Nice rage drive. No wall splat. Oh, shit. Actually, jabs him out of a, a power crush tackle there. Yeah, and he with a lot of patience here, taking his time, and then that happened. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Yeah, he doesn't tech roll, that's a back turn setup, so he just stays on the ground and takes another uh, Oki hit there. Rage drive, he has the rage drive, gotta be careful. Ah, oh, fuck, well placed. Well placed. He waited quite a bit there. 
let Davud, you know, start throwing some pokes and then boom, rage drive, counter it. Very nice. So two to one here. Nice punish. Oof, big up for two. Wow, he only gets a wild stunning four on that low poke. Considering how strong that low poke is, you, you'd really want a bigger punish there. But I think it's only minus 11. Oh no! The very rare combo drop from Nii. Nice, closes it out. There we go. There we go. Well done. Looked way more confident here and in control of a match. A weird combo drop that's so rare to see from Ni. It's usually very optimal, calculated, not a lot of nerves, you know, no choking. All right, yeah. That's it's not too surprising. Opt for infinite. Alisa has incredible space control, incredible movement, dashes at will across the map. Infinite works. Doesn't get a whole lot out of combos considering bad wall travel. Pretty lackluster wall combo. Whereas Feng Wei, his combos these days, his wall damage these days, his pressure at the wall with his 50 50 and everything. And that rage drive. So it's a no brainer to go for infinite here, I feel. Nice break on a tackle. Ah, it gets the whole sequence. You see, you'll see how often he throws that back four, that fish hook, uh, inside crescent kick there. That's a 12 frame mid, that's safe on block, and that's homing. It's it's just uh, one of the best pokes in the game. 12 frame homing mid, safe. I literally count them how often he is going to throw that. And much due to Davud's movement and Alisa's movement. He really wants to lock lock her down with that back four. Make sure he doesn't move around. Like, respect me, respect me, don't step. Oh, holy shit. Big counter at four. That's a lot of damage. Ah, the pokes are adding up here as well. Davud, quite a decent life lead here. And he, that's a sidestep for to close it out. Strong low poke. Now he's up two rounds. Very nice whiff punish. Yeah, we're both throwing homings here. Both of them. Yeah, everyone's just throwing homing, homing, homing. Like, don't step. Play 2D Tekken. He's really not bombarding with lows here, Ni. It's just mid check, mid check, homing, 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 mid check. No lows. Okay, 10 seconds left. I'm waiting for the big risky low here. He has to do something. There we go. It pays off. Counter it. Gets the Oki. There it was. I was waiting for it. Well done. He always does this, man. The trump card. Down back three. With the perfect timing right now. You can say that he has a prediction. Like, he's going to eat that play time. Destroy it. Okay, the dashing from the hood. But still, it's like it's two to one here. Like, nice punish there. One one. Oh, oh. Ah. he could have launched. Could have launched. Yeah, he's he's he's, he's, he's pl playing extremely safe. But yeah, he's, he's losing this poking battle here against Davud and Alisa. What a step. 
10 seconds left. Again, he, he needs to take a risk here. Nice step. He pressed. He pressed. He doesn't believe in conditioning. What? Nee, oh, but that's what he's doing all the time. That's what he, how he won with uh, that counter atomic free. He was conditioning Davud to a certain timing and pattern, like homing mid, homing mid, don't step me, keep you in check, etc. And then uh, that uh, down back free, he just conditioned him into mids, then, then he goes for the risky low. But I feel like Davud perhaps could have seen that coming. But again, he had Davud's timing, so he counter hit him with the Dalmak free, which is uh, um, something to keep in mind, obviously. But I don't know if Dalmak free goes under Alisa's down forward four. It's very evasive, but I know I don't know if it goes under that. Nice campo. So now we are 1-1 one, one in matches. And yeah, he got a match on, you know, knees almost unbeatable Feng Wei. So that's, that's probably where everyone gets a little bit nervous. Everyone looking for need to take this. It's like, uh, I mean, Davud, obvious underdog. Underdogs are always fun. Uh, it's fun to see knee dominate as well. But yeah, when someone gets a match on and quite a convincing match on Nee's Feng Wei. That's where you go like, wow, like what is happening? Okay, so Nee, nee got the first round there. Down back three, while standing one, back four, adding up the pokes here. If he can just get up close and keep up momentum, his pokes are second to none. But again, it's, it's hard to keep that distance because that character, top three movement, it's like Tekken 5 backdash, you know, where they do one backdash and they're out of harm's way almost. So that is a problem for Feng Wei and his poking. Where some of the best options, you know, it's a bit limited in range. So it certainly isn't the easiest matchup here. Oh my god! The three! Oh. Nice one on two. Oh, he's going the in. The mix up. Okay. Nice combo. Pro break. Yeah, he, he has wall pressure now, though, if he can use it. But yeah, Alisa, the, look at that. If, if she doesn't want to stay there, she doesn't have to. High power crush, but on block is safe and pushes you away from her. So it's like she doesn't have to stay there. Very nice. With a precise timing, goes for the side step into slow launch. Very nice low parry. I never see him drop that combo. I never see him drop that low parry combo. Hey, is he a bit shook? Yeah, you see? Down two, one of the best low pokes in the game. Alisa, one backdash, you whiffed. Like, don't underestimate the movement and hurt box on that character. She's real thin and she moves incredible distances. Top 10. Top 10. Nice while setting one, two. Oh, no, 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 no. Nice, up for two. Such a good move. Such a good move. Oh, that's a red lever. I think Nee is using his own lever there on his arcade stick. You see the red joystick lever? That's his own brand. A uh, friend of mine owns one. He can go for the up forward too. The move, even sometimes 
a race uh, homing mode first. Yeah. So you have to be very careful. It's it's a summer jack situation, man. Yeah. It's like I know that you know that I know yeah. that you will do. Oh, race ah. I have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a counter pick, actually counter pick move. Yeah, I also felt it was too stiff. I like I like when we are a little bit more sloppy, floppy, oh. like, like this. Ego of a trip. Thanks for three months. Ah, oh, two one. Two one. Right, it's two one to knee, and obviously Davud goes for infinite again. Um, can knee close this out on an infinite stage? Her low pokes, like down three, infinite, literally infinite reach, low poke. Like, <laughs> great timing on standing four. Yeah, this is gonna be Davud's round. Yeah. Look at that backdash. Like, nice. Oh, ho, ho, taste my booty. No, I know that was a kick, but I'm going to pretend it was her butt cheeks. Uh, Davud, uh, Davud steamrolling. Nice one, two, two. Trying to 50 50 there with down forward free. Top 10. Top 10. I'm, I'm telling you, like, she's even better than Zafina, you know, at back, you know, Zafina's broken movement, backdash, backdash, long range down for two. Alyssa pretty much matches that backdash and has a super long reach, 15 frame back four that you saw there. Like, just backdashing like that, uh, way faster than your character, by the way. And then one of the longest reach 15 frame launchers in the game in back four. Like, don't underestimate that character. Not aware of what going on around him right now. No headphones. Alyssa is probably better than Zafin. Uh, don't underestimate Zafin either. She's godlike. But people sleep on Alyssa so much. Again, like so strong, so strong. What a low parry, beautiful. Like is there a blocking it? There's like he sniped a bit already. He went to the low parry. Actually, he do a side step into parry. Oh, like a random parry. Wow. It's happening again. Oh God! God! Oh my god, so he, he, he's got his walls now, and now he's really gonna put them to use. Uh, Davud is now two rounds away of winning the entire tournament. Nice stop. No shoulder bow, ops for a down four, ops to stay really safe. God, those pokes hit so hard. And Nia, yeah, my god, he's so patient. He's so patient. Just moving, keeping his guard up. It's it's that one player you can sometimes you can count literally certain rounds. He'll go like twenty seconds without pressing a button. He's just looking. It's quite remarkable. Pro break. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Nice combo. I thought, I thought that was a wall angle. He wouldn't be able to work, but he certainly made it work. Nice. Oh my god. Yeah, Davud only needs this round. It's like... 
Nice throw break. Nice! Gets the 50-50. Down for three. Boom! Big damage. Now he has wall pressure, which is so important. Yeah, he's gonna kick there. That's a very classic uh, Sabaki setup, parry setup. Nice, one, two, two. Down back three. Only needs two more pokes. Down two, one more. Back four. While running, never gonna do it. Oh, blocks for rage drive. Very good. One of the best rage drives in the game. Back four to close it out. One more round. It's completely even. Davud wins if he takes this round now and he just resets the bracket, but he really needs it, obviously. Don't want to lose the tournament. Back wow, he's just throwing those back ones. One of the best mid pokes in the game. One one is blocked. Oh my god, the pressure. Ah, oh, standing four. Davud is relentless here. He wants the tournament. Oh no! It's gonna be huge. Yeah, it's going to be it. No, 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 no. There is, there is a space remaining. Go, send the Oh god, wall pressure. Size the bump plus two. Down two. Okay, okay. It's going to be answered. The pump is coming. Ah! One more poke. Okay. One more poke, and he wins. Oh! Gets the low parry. Tiger uppercut. 2022. Oh! 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 He's he's there. Oh! Go, go for the hug. He left me. He was so he close. Me. But anyway, yeah, that was a, definitely a good. He was so close to resetting the bracket. Wow! Incredible matches. An unbelievable play by Davud. Like, unbelievable play. And huge congrats to him. Huge congrats. Yeah, I'm back, I'm back. What an Alyssa. Whoa, man. And dude yeah, shows up kind of out of nowhere. It's like, he wasn't on my radar. What an upset, like, beating Nii. What an upset. But Nii was so close to resetting that bracket. And I wonder what it would have looked like if he got the reset. Like, I feel like the match from the wood it really shows like everyone right now like this is the potential of like what at least like, Wow. Yeah, right. yeah, that's um, the thing actually. If Ni reset he would have won. I'm not that certain. Uh Ni was forced in this matchup to play like really cautiously and safe and I think like Davud got he always seemed to get the big hits in. Like the big launching counter hits seem to be more on his side. And then uh, Ni won a lot of defensive wars where he got a punish or a sidestep. Uh, I feel like the big hits were landed by Davud and Ni made a lot of good defensive tactical decisions. But as soon as he could throw it into an infinite map, Davud, Ni had big problems. Big problems. But uh, that was very close, but what an upset beating the undefeatable knee. Like, holy shit. So, well, really, really well played to Davud. I hope we get to see him soon again at other international events. Uh, having Arsan Ash at his back, helping him like financially and with uh, mental support must be incredible. What a friend to have. Uh, and yeah, I just can't wait to see more of this. Hope he can make it to Tekken World Tour, potentially. That would be awesome. Uh, so again, amazing matches and super well played to Ni. Nee. Um, I'm sure he's going to study Alisa even more. I, I, I know he knows the character inside out, but he's going to study in particular Davud's patterns with the character, I think, because this is certainly something he wants more intel on before they fight again, is my guess. So I hope you enjoyed my commentary. Thanks for watching.